You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is part eight in the series on thinking rationally. This week, I'm going to tell you about some very popular irrational biases. In last week's episode, I talked about a very interesting book called The Myth of the Rational Voter by Brian Kaplan. And I'll put another link in the show notes for that book. Brian Kaplan is an economist, and in that book, he explains some very popular irrational biases held by the majority of people about economics. And he talks about how these biases inform people's political views, people's voting patterns, and also the behavior of politicians and government policies. And he explains why these irrational ideas are wrong and how these irrational ideas have a damaging effect on the economy and on society through popular political policies that conform to the irrational biases that most people hold. So I wanted to tell you about these biases because I think it's very interesting in itself, but also because it's useful to know what these biases are so that you can challenge yourself if you feel the pull of these irrational ideas. Many people laugh at irrational ideas when they're expounded by religious people. For example, there's a lot of people who are very intelligent, secular people who laugh at religious creationists for believing that the earth is just a few thousand years old. And they find that kind of idea ridiculous. And they also find it ridiculous that someone who understands so little about science would hold such convictions about the age of the earth, for example, because of their religious beliefs. And secular people who laugh at those views, they can see how irrational creationism is, and they can see how biased people are for believing those ideas. But many of those same secular thinkers hold irrational views about economics in particular that are just as ill-informed and just as ignorant as the creationists' views are about the age of the earth. And economic questions are hugely important in politics. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about some of the biases towards economics. Now, of course, economics is a specialist subject, so not everyone is going to know that much about economics. But the problem is people think they know about economics and they also have forthright opinions about what the government should do to intervene in the economy. And there's a great quote by the economist Murray Rothbard where he said... It's no crime to be ignorant of economics, which is, after all, a specialised discipline and one that most people consider to be a dismal science. But it is totally irresponsible to have a loud and vociferous opinion on economic subjects while remaining in this state of ignorance. And that's really what happens when people vent their irrational biases in political opinions. I'm not an expert in economics, but I do have a background in economics. I did a a bachelor's degree in economic history, a master's degree in property market economics, and I hold a PhD, and my PhD was about the theory of rental values in property markets. Alongside that, I've also founded and grown and sold a business. And because I take a huge interest in economics, I've read about it my whole adult life. I've been reading about economics for over 20 years. So that's my background. And in this episode, I'm going to use the biases that Brian Kaplan mentions in his book as some examples, but I'll also provide some links to other episodes that I've done of the Launch Your Life podcast that are relevant for this topic. If you want to use rational thinking, it's really helpful to be aware of popular irrational ideas that have a big influence in society around you. And although the ideas in this podcast are about economics, there are many other areas where Popular ideas are wrong and irrational, but nonetheless very influential. For example, people's attitudes towards many aspects of science, including genetic modification, the use of chemicals and pesticides, as well as lots of other areas where the majority of people hold ideas that are demonstrably wrong, but nonetheless very popular views. But we're just going to use economics as the example in this episode and talk about a a few of these irrational ideas. And before we talk about the the irrational ideas themselves, I just want to make the point that there is another question, which is why are these irrational ideas so popular? What is the appeal of these particular biases? What makes them so sticky? And that is an interesting question, but I think that's a separate question. Let's leave that question aside for this episode and just look at what these irrational ideas are 
So the first irrational bias that I'm going to talk about is what Brian Kaplan calls the pessimistic bias. And this is generally that people assume that economic conditions are not as good as they really are. People tend to believe that the world is going from bad to worse, the economy faces huge challenges, and that living standards are falling. It's basically the idea that things were better in the good old days, and things are getting worse. And this is a very seductive story. The idea that things are going from bad to worse is incredibly seductive. People want to hear that story much more than they want to hear that living standards are improving, that quality of life is improving. Because this idea that things are going from bad to worse has been around since the Industrial Revolution. I mean, this was even the Marxists were talking about how the working class is being immiserated. They were talking about that back in 1850, during the time when living standards were going through the most incredible improvement in history. So there is a bias towards pessimism, which basically makes people assume that things are getting worse and that catastrophe is imminent. The economy is about to collapse. Things are about to go down the plug hole. Many people are just not aware and don't understand that we live in a time of the most incredible reduction in global poverty in history. During our lifetimes, the most amazing reduction in poverty has happened in history. And I won't go into all the details of the statistics because I've done an episode on this. It's actually episode 90, which is called Rational Optimism versus Doom Porn. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes with lots of interesting ideas from a book called The Rational Optimist, which you can find. I'll also put a link to that in the show notes. And some other interesting ideas relating to this are in episode 227, which was a review of a book called The Better Angels of Our Nature by Steven Pinker, which is also a useful book to challenge this pessimism bias. Now, of course, this is not to say that there are not huge problems in the world and that even within this specific sphere of economics, that there aren't terrible risks with the financial system or with the economy in general. The point is that there is a bias that if you are faced with a lack of information, are you likely to think that things are getting worse or things are getting better? And Judging from the bias that most people exhibit, you're likely to assume that things are getting worse and that catastrophe is around the corner. Of course, in terms of economics, this idea, this pessimism bias generally tends to lead to another idea, which is something must be done. The government should intervene and do something to the economy. Pessimism is much more seductive and much more interesting to people than a more optimistic outlook. And this has a huge effect on the way that you view data, on the way that you try and understand the world that we live in. I think this pessimism bias affects many other areas too. So if you want to challenge your own level of rationality, have a think about the pessimism bias, not just in, in terms of your view of the economy and whether or not you live in a world that is getting better or worse, and whether living standards around you are getting better or worse, but also Think about how it might affect other areas of your life and whether or not you have been influenced by that bias towards pessimism. So that's the pessimism bias. The next bias I want to talk about is what Brian Kaplan calls the anti-market bias. And this is just a general bias against markets. This is the very popular assumption that markets themselves are deeply suspicious, problematic and bad. People should not be left alone to trade with each other because they will get up to no good, essentially. Most people don't understand how markets work or how voluntary trade could possibly lead to good outcomes without someone intervening to control it. Since the mid-19th century, since the time of the Marxists, there has been an assumption that capitalism is the problem. And it's a very popular assumption. Now, of course, it depends what on earth people think they mean by capitalism, and many people use that word in very different ways. But the basic assumption that markets and commerce are themselves a problem, a social problem that should be worked against, is a very popular view. People are deeply suspicious of markets. They don't understand the invisible hand. They don't understand how it is that private interests and self-interest can be coordinated 
through a market process to bring about win-win outcomes and improve the quality of life for everyone. And this suspicion of markets used to be much stronger before the Enlightenment and before the Industrial Revolution. And there used to be much stronger constraints on markets. One example of this is the anti-usury laws that reflected the Christian religion in Europe for many centuries before the Industrial Revolution, there were laws in place preventing people from lending money at interest because of the irrational bias against interest and the basic process of interest rates. People couldn't get their heads around how it could possibly be fair for someone to earn money from lending money. And a strong part of the Enlightenment was getting rid of some of these laws. Jeremy Bentham wrote a very famous article about the usury laws and, and why they were irrational and unjust. But the prejudice remains against market processes because people don't understand how markets work. And of course, in the Islamic world, they haven't got rid of anti-usury laws. There is Islamic banking is all about preventing people earning interest because in the Islamic world, they haven't had that enlightenment process getting rid of things like those usury laws. But it's not just usury. People are incredibly suspicious of all market phenomena, like, for example, profits. People can't imagine how it can be fair or just that people earn profits. There's a huge prejudice against it. And people think that profits are somehow a gift given to entrepreneurs or the rich. They don't understand that profits are not a handout. And the most irrational aspect of the anti-market bias is that the majority of people don't understand that prices come from supply and demand. They imagine that prices are a reflection of how nice or greedy individual entrepreneurs are, not something that arises from the interaction of people on a marketplace that's out of the control of individuals. The majority of people have this fundamental belief in win-lose. They can't understand that there can be market phenomena of win-win. Now, I don't have time in this episode to go into all the detail refuting the anti-market bias, but I will point to some other episodes that are relevant for this, particularly uh, a podcast called Profit is Sanity, which I did ages ago. I'll put a link in the show notes. That was part of the entrepreneurship series. And also episodes 176 and 177, which are a review of a book called The Anti-Capitalist Mentality by Ludwig von Mises. So if you're interested in a sort of more detailed discussion of this, you can follow some of those links. But the point I want to make is this. There is an irrational bias against markets. People are deeply suspicious of markets because they think that anything that involves self-interest must lead to bad outcomes and must be wrong and should be stopped or constrained. They don't understand how it is that self-interested people can be constrained by the process of competition and by the process of the market itself. So that's the anti-market bias. The next one is very closely linked to that bias, and it's the anti-foreign bias. And this is basically the idea that protectionism helps the economy. Protectionism has been debunked for 200 years now, thoroughly debunked by economics for 200 years, and it keeps coming back in different new guises. This idea of a mercantilist, protectionist, close-the-borders type mentality, it just keeps coming back. And the reason it keeps coming back, even though it's been debunked in economics is because it's very popular. People consistently underestimate the benefits of trading with foreigners and they like to blame foreigners for their problems. The root of this, again, is this win-lose thinking that people can't understand how it could be possible for any interaction to involve win-win, for both sides to win. So people assume that if you're trading with somebody in another country, one of you is getting ripped off it's either you or them. They can't imagine that both sides could gain. And so people assume that, you know, it's always a question of who's going to win in trade deals or something. They don't understand the concept of free trade. The funny thing about free trade is that you don't require any trade deal in order to have free trade. All you need to do is just not intervene in a market. And then consumers in that country will not have tariffs and will be able to benefit from the benefits of trade. It's a unilateral thing. There's no agreement required between countries to implement free trade. If a foreign country has tariffs preventing goods and services from your country going in, then the people who are hurt by that are the consumers of that foreign country. The people who are hurt by protectionism are the consumers in the country that's doing the protectionism. 
and of course the people who gain are the few special interests. The real root of both the anti-market bias and the anti-foreign bias is that people don't understand comparative advantage. And I've done a whole episode about this, so for more detail, have a look at the episode called Comparative Advantage is Mind-Blowing. I'll put a link in the show notes. I think that's probably enough for now to give you a flavour of some things to think about. These ideas are both very popular and very damaging to society. And it's funny how invisible the irrationality of these ideas is to most people. As I said in the beginning, it's easy to laugh at creationists for thinking that the the world is only a few thousand years old. And yet, people have these very ignorant views about the economy, and they hold these views very strongly. And these views influence what politicians do and what government policy is, which ends up making everyone poorer. As I said in the beginning, there are many other fields where irrational ideas are very popular. I've just chosen economics as one example, where most people just don't get the most basic fundamental truths about how the world works. Most people just don't get comparative advantage. They don't understand it. So I hope you find that interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I will be talking about other aspects of rational thinking in future episodes. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.